Current time is 9.16 a.m. Eastern at approximately 7 p.m. Eastern last night on uh, August 23rd, or the 24th today. The most elaborate Sombra clue was revealed. Sombra made her presence known in uh, the most overt way yet. And uh, people have been working round the clock since then to try to solve this latest clue. Why? Because that shit's counting down. As of right now, we've got approximately five hours. Five hours and seven minutes if you want to use the exact Sombra Hint countdown clock. And what's going to happen in about five hours? Let's see, it's going to be 3 p.m. Eastern, which will be noon. High noon. Blizzard time. That's uh, West Coast, Pacific. So what's going to happen at noon, folks? Is Sombra going to reveal herself? Will it just be another big clue? I don't know, but I get the feeling we're in Endgame right now. Now this all started when uh, people noticed a new forum post on the Overwatch forums. And uh, if you're not from the US, you might have some trouble seeing this. So what you want to make sure is up in your URL. If you got something other than when you go to playoverwatch.com, make sure you change uh, your English to English US, so EN-US, it might default to something else, uh, like in my case in Canada. So put that to US, go to Community General Discussion. You're gonna notice a locked thread by Skycoder. Damn you, Blizzard. And as you can see right now, it's five hours. It was posted five hours ago. But what people notice is when it was first posted, it said 20 hours. And an hour later, it said 19, then 18. In case you're not familiar with forums, it's not supposed to work that way. Numbers. So, it was realized that this is a countdown. Normally, a post count up. You can see this was posted one minute ago, two minutes, three minutes, and as time goes by, it should be counting up. Not counting down, so this is clearly some kind of countdown clock to noon Pacific time where something's gonna happen, folks. Posted by Skycoder, if you're not familiar. We went over all the details of the Sombra ARG up to this point in this video over here. And I encourage you to check that out to get caught up. But basically, there was a point when we were looking at what we called the Skycode in Dorado. And we thought that was going to be... <laughs> that was something huge. And we spent like 95% of our resources on that for a few days. Before Blizzard basically mockingly told us that we're dummies. So Sombra here calling herself Skycoder. Uh, now this thread title, this is binary for the number 23. We've gone over this in the past in one of our first reveal videos. That honor reveal video where we got the Sombra clues, our first Sombra clues, is when the number 23 became significant to us. Again, yesterday was August 23rd, but more importantly, Sombra would be the 23rd hero coming Overwatch. So what happens when we click on this? A manner of crazy shit, let me tell you. You can see right there the Sombra Skull, that candy skull, that uh, sort of thing reminiscent of Dia de los Muertos. And Sombra just starts taking shit over right here. Her post just says, she who has the information has the power. And you catch a glimpse of a Reaper screenshot, we'll talk about that in a moment. Before things just pop around and then some more code starts getting typed in here. So, both of those two things have some significance. On August 20th, the game detectives working on this Sombra ARG, this alternate reality game, uh, were a bit stumped and decided to try to communicate directly to Sombra. So they actually took a screenshot of Reaper and uh, data moshed it. They applied some of Sombra's techniques, right, to an image, hiding a message in there, and, uh, a user by the name of Mr. Muselk tweeted this out to 
the official Overwatch Twitter saying, Okay, Sombra, your move. They're hoping to make contact. Since Sombra seems to like breaking the fourth wall. She's been talking to us. Figured let's try talking to her. So we sent this out. And that's that same image that you saw flickering there. Now, one thing that's noteworthy is that the image that is sent back is not identical. There are some differences in the image, and there are people who are still working on that, trying to figure out what difference, what, what, what's going on with that? What is Sombra trying to tell us? What is the coded message in there? Or maybe she's just trolling us, who knows? But what's also interesting is that when this was first uh, released, when the forum thread was first released, the image wasn't there. And people looking at the source code were actually noticing some errors being thrown. And it was because the image was missing. And once the image was put in, uh, some minutes later, the errors went away. So I don't know if that has any relevance or someone just forgot to upload the image or properly redirect or something. But this is the most direct contact now that we've had with Sombra. We sent her a message, she acknowledged our message, added some more encoding into it and sent it back to us, so... We're still trying to figure out what she's saying there. So after that, that big dump of code, uh, as we've gone over in our previous video there, if you learned anything from that, you know that at the very end of that message, that double equal sign, that's characteristic of base64 encoding. And so you can uh, pretty easily decode that, and what you get is another ASCII skull. Now, first blush, this looks identical to the first skull we received. Again, we went over this in the previous video, but upon closer inspection, you can see some differences. Now, the characters you're seeing here aren't all exact, and this is because, uh, depending on what viewer you're using, you might not be able to output some of the symbols. Uh, but regardless of what viewer you might be using, like web browsers often strip out a lot of the, uh, a lot of the special characters and stuff, but, uh, again, regardless if you can just take the base hex codes uh, of these values, that's something that you could easily represent anything with. So, for those who don't know, hex or hexadecimal is a base 16 number system. For reference, our regular number system is base 10, so that's digits 0 through 9. Those are the 10 unique numbers in our number system. While hex is base 16, it uses 16 unique symbols which is numbers 0 through 9, but then also letters A, B, C, D, E, F. So in hex, what you always get is a, a two-digit code. So for instance, uh, 34, a 3 and a 4, that represents number 4 in, in ASCII, as we call it, in our regular text. Or the letter K is 4B. And that's more typical to see, you typically see a, a number and a letter. But virtually anything that you can type on your keyboard can be represented, so any any one symbol on your keyboard can be represented in hex by uh, one of those two digit codes. And of course there are symbols beyond the symbols on your keyboard that can also be represented with these two digit codes. So going back to our skulls, the two skulls were compared uh, people ran uh, basically a, a difference checking script or program that compared the two and then it just basically output the characters that were different. So it, it, it played a game of spot the difference, you know, when you were a kid and you would have to like circle the differences on the two images. It did that and it output what those differences were. And to make this easier, it out the, the people working on this output this in hex. Uh, so that they could easily represent each of these symbols without it getting screwed up because it might be a special character that wouldn't display properly in a web browser and stuff like that. So that's how we get this following hex code dump of characters. Now again, if you try to translate this as is from hex to ASCII, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to get a bunch of gibberish characters. However, if you subtract 23 in hex from each of these, you start to get a decoded message. Now, what can we possibly mean by this, and how do we do it? Alright, here. 
Run your calculator program in, uh, if you're on Windows, run your calculator program. If you're not on Windows, I, I, I don't know how to help you. Now, if you don't know how to get to your calculator, a shortcut will be to press Windows R, type in calc.exe, hit enter. Now, once you got it running, you want to make sure you're in Program Review. Uh, I'm on Windows 10, your stuff may look different here, but just make sure you're on Programmer. Might be, uh, yeah, might have to go to View Programmer if you're on an older version of Windows. And once you're there, switch from decimal to hex. So now we're using the calculator with hex values. So let's type in that first digit on our code, which is 8F. And let's subtract 23. And you'll see that the result we get is 6C. If you convert 6C and hex to ASCII, you get the letter L. Now let's try again with 88. The next code, 88 minus 23, 65. 65 is the letter E. Clear again, next one, 96 minus 23, 73. 73 becomes the letter S. So all of these gibberish symbols, when you subtract 23 from them, start to become letters. And they start to spell out something. So it turns out if you go through every one of those hex codes, subtract the number 23, you start to get a message, and with just a bit of finagling, this is the message you get. It's a big string of text, but you can clearly see this is some form of message, and uh, if you space out the words, it's in Spanish, you can see this phrase here. And so what does this say here? Les prometí un juego. Creo que ustedes los directivos de juegos lo lamarían un... Trailhead, that's just an English word. And this basically translates to, I promise you a game. I think you game detectives call this a trailhead. And then it's some um, string of shit. And what a trailhead is, is basically the, the, the first point of contact, I guess. The first way that players typically discover an ARG. This could be a, a website, it could be a... a a puzzle, whatever it is, it's something to draw in players. It seems a bit bizarre that she's referring to a trailhead given we've already started working on this, unless she's trying to tell us that this is just the start now of the real game. Everything everything up to this point was what, just practice? Was just teasing and now the real arg is starting? Uh, regardless, the thing, the gibberish text ending with HTML clearly points towards a URL. And you also see that BLZ at the start, uh, BLZ GDA, which, as we went over in our previous video, is characteristic of Blizzard's uh, media server. So if we use what we know of the Blizzard media server URL, we can reformat this into a hyperlink. And what you can see at the end of this URL here is a brief phrase saying, Usa ambas calaveras, which translates to use both skulls. Now we follow this URL, and we're directed to this video here. Patient named Janina Kowalska. Who dat? You look at the skull here, and this seems to be some kind of medical record for someone who uh, suffered some extensive damage to their orbital socket, their eye. And uh, hey, who can that be? Could that be Anna? Anna, who wears the eye patch, we know from her video that she took, uh, not a bullet to the eye, but she got shot through her sniper scope, shrapnel went flying into her eye, that's how she lost her eye. And, uh, I guess the other thing we know about Anna is that she probably went over, uh, went under different, uh, aliases, especially when she went into hiding. And the name Janina Kowalska, uh, is basically Jane Doe. This could either be Polish or Russian, but basically... Uh, Ko Kowalska is a fairly common last name, so it's basically uh, their version of Jane Doe. So we're we're almost certain right now that this is Anna that's being referred to. Now if you change the URL to an MP4, because this is a video, you can actually download this video. And once you've downloaded it, if you right click and go to properties here, and look under details, you find another message. Parecen estar muy interesados en este eros. Tal vez les interese conocer algunos detallitos que ha averiguado sobre ellos. And this basically translates to, you seem to be very interested in these heroes. 
may be interested to know some details that I found out about them. So this is Sombra basically telling us that she has information. Which is her theme. Information is power, right? Or she who has the information holds the power. And uh, so she's telling us that, look, I know, I knew about Anna when she went into hiding. Here's her file. Now there's a brief flash in this video where you can see Sombra's skull. That Sombra skull symbol. And moreover, there's another secret message hidden in this video. Look at the heartbeat monitor at the bottom. Notice anything strange? There's some pattern going on there. It's not, it's not a repeating thing. It seems to be different every time. And let's count the number of vertical lines here. There's 26 of them. How many letters in the alphabet are there? Ah, uh, yeah. So if you ascribe a letter to each of those lines, and then figure out where the heartbeat blips every time, you get a message. Moment in crime. Now back in September 2015, Blizzard released a video called A Moment in Crime Special Report, The Junkers. And it was all about Junkrat and Roadhog and their crime spree. So at that point, okay, we have this message, Moment in Crime, referring to the video, A Moment in Crime. Uh, what about it? And uh, in the video, it's basically one of those crime reports saying, you know, we've got these two honor criminals, uh, please contact us with tips uh, so we can arrest these guys. So at that point, someone got the idea of uh, checking for a website. And there actually is a website, amomentincrime.com. And you go to that website, and what do you see? Some Spanish text with the word Sombra. Estableciendo conexión, protocolo Sombra, iniciado... Infiltrando la respuesta automática del email de pistas, terminando conexión. Now, basically, this is saying establishing connection, protocol Sombra initiated, uh, infiltrating automatic email reply, uh, terminating connection. So that gave people the idea to try emailing a moment in crime. So how would you typically uh, reach a, a tip line. Normally it's tips at domain name. So if you send an email, you guys can do this. Send an email to tips at a moment in crime .com and you'll get an automated response back. And this is the email you would see. Thank you for contacting a moment in crime's anonymous crime line. We've analyzed your submission and forwarded the information to the relevant parties. Your help could be vital in apprehending these crit. And then we got Sombra. Uh, infiltrating this, interrupting the message, but to, just to finish it off, these criminals and bringing them to justice, these fugitives are responsible for a string of robberies, arson, blah blah blah, the rest is not important. But the interrupted text here, again, establishing connection, protocol Sombra initiated, then we have a weird string of text before terminating connection. Now it took a while to crack this next bit here. What could this string of numbers be. Obviously what uh, that string of gibberish on at the bottom was another ciphered phrase. But what could all these numbers refer to? Well one thing to note is that this is a 5x5 five five grid. Every timestamp or whatever you want to call this, every set is one, two, three, four, five of them. Five rows and five columns. So now it's seeming, okay, this is maybe some kind of three-point coordinate system. If you look at the first coordinate, it's always either a one or a two. And the other numbers range wildly. But one and two, again, this took a long time to crack, but what do we have one and two of? We have two skulls. So one would be the first skull, two would be the second skull, and then you can just take the next two coordinates as the X and the Y. So this first code here, for instance, first skull, 7 to the left, 47 down. Now, what you might notice is 7 and 47, we clearly don't have 47 lines going vertically, but we probably do have 47 going uh, width-wise, so it's probably Y and X coordinates instead of X and Y. So if we go 7 down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then you count out 47 characters, you arrive at the letter S. And you do that for all of those, and you get now a 5x5 grid of letters and numbers and symbols. 
So those who know about these things recognize this as a potential uh, bifid cipher key. They figured this might be the key to solving the message beneath the 5x5 grid. So how do you go about doing that? Well, let's look at the message. It starts with the letter J. Do we have the letter J in our 5x5 grid? Yep, it's the second entry. So it's in position 1, 2. Y value is 1, X value is 2. Next, we have a period. So the period is position Y position 2, X position 1. So that's 2, 1. Then we have a 7. A 7 is Y position 4, X position 2. And so on and so on. So you go through every single character in that code, and you've now ascribed a, a two-digit value based on the position in the grid. Then what you want to do with this long string of characters you just got is divide it in two and put the second half beneath the first. Then you're going to read every pair of numbers now with the top above the bottom. So it's now 1, 1, 2, 4. Instead of 1, 2, 2, 1, 4, 2, the codes are now 1, 1, 2, 4, 2, 3. So 1, 1 is S, 2, 4, 2 down, 4 to the right is O, then what, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 is an M, then 1, 4 is a B, 4, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3 is an R, 2, 2 is an at sign, and hey, look at that, Sombra. You keep going to translate the whole thing, and you get this phrase here, which seems to be leet speak for Sombra, information is power, Sombra. And as of right now, that's where we are, folks. So it seems we've now solved the current clue. We still haven't solved the tracer trail from way back. Again, we went over that in the previous video. And we haven't solved the uh, the data moshed image of Reaper, but we're not sure whether that is something or not. You see, unfortunately, the image that was sent to Blizzard, to Sombra, uh, suffered some compression in the rehosting uh, in sending it through Twitter. So. We didn't actually send <laughs> Blizzard a workable file, unfortunately. See, when you compress an image, you're changing the data in the image, which basically renders everything that was done to it useless. Well, it's not fair to say, but it, it just means things... It makes things a lot more difficult to try to decode whatever Blizzard may have put into it. They clearly did something to it, but whether they're just messing with us or there actually is something there, we don't know for sure. But regardless, that's probably going to be ancillary to their main focus. It seems this string of lead speak is what Blizzard wanted to give us. Maybe now we have what we need to solve the tracer trail. Maybe something more is going to be revealed at high noon Blizzard time. Maybe Sombra is going to be revealed. Who knows? That might be a bit of a stretch, but again, it, it feels like we're entering endgame. Either that or things are just starting to ramp up now to the real game. Again, this has been the most visible that Sombra has ever been. Anyone going to the forums is going to see this thread. They click on that and they're going to see what is all this weird shit going on. People who, you know, up up to this point, you had to be looking for Sombra to find her. To find evidence of her. This is the first thing that people are going to be stumbling upon. Just forum goers are going to find. And they're going to be like, WTF. So that wraps up this video for now. Do be around for, for noon. For 3 p.m. Eastern or noon Pacific. Hit the Blizzard forums, try to find out what what's going to be going on, and we'll update you guys when we can. Uh, I wish I could have had more to show you at this point, but uh, I think we're about, we've about solved everything that they've given us to solve to this point. So I look forward to seeing what's to come next. Thanks for watching, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders. And be alerted when our next Sombra video goes live. Personally, I just can't wait to get the new Junkrat Zika Virus Patient Skin, or the new Tracer Voice Line, Don't Drink the Water, or the new Zarya Spray of her doping results coming up negative. It's gonna be a great Olympics this year, folks.